Mr. Mack is recognized the Subcommittee on Western Hemisphere Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, it is great to, to see you again, Secretary uh, Clinton. Um, I am going to switch gears a little bit as well. As you know, I, I uh, serve as the Chair of the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee, and uh, so there is a lot, lot to talk about. Um, but I wanted to, uh, to uh, talk a little bit about Fast and Furious. Um, and specifically, at what point did the State Department learn uh, of Operation Fast and Furious? Congressman, I don't know the exact time. I, um, I can tell you that based on our uh, information from the, um, from the part of the State Department that would deal with uh, this kind of uh, issue, we have no uh, record of any request for coordination. We have no uh, record of any kind of uh, notice or heads up. Um, and, you know, I, I, my, my recollection is that I, I learned about it from the press. That is my recollection. So um, I, I think then I know the answer to this question, but I will ask it anyways. Did the State Department issue the Justice Department a license or a written waiver uh, in order to allow for the transfer of thousands of weapons across the U.S. Mexico border? Well, Congressman, you know, this is the first time I have been asked this. And I can tell you that based on the record of any activity by the Bureau that would have been responsible, we see no evidence. But let me do a thorough uh, request to make sure that what I am telling you reflects everything we know. Uh, thank you. That would be greatly appreciated. And I, I wrote a letter to you yesterday. Don't ex <laughs> I am sure you got it and you have read it. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I thought it was for my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, under, under the Arms Export Control Act, of, uh, the Justice Department was required to receive a written waiver from the State Department to account for their intent to cause arms to be exported to drug cartels in Mexico. If no such waiver was received, uh, Justice Department officials have violated the law. And you would agree with that, correct? I cannot offer an opinion. Well, you would agree. I don't. That it, I don't know. I mean, this is the first time I'm being asked. I have no. I'm not asking you if you if there was such a written, but if they hadn't asked and I, hadn't I received by law, uh, the Justice Department would be violating U.S. law. I cannot offer you any opinion on that. I don't have the information or any analysis. I can only tell you the facts as we uh, know them in the State Department. Okay. Well, I, I will submit then and say that if the law says that they have to get a written. Uh, if the uh, State Department is, is required to give a written waiver for the uh, cause of arms to be exported to drug cartels in Mexico, and if they didn't do that and that didn't happen, then they are in violation of the law. Uh, and so the question here is who do we hold responsible? How, you know, and I think there's a lot of frustration, uh, at least for myself, that uh, when we hear Mexi the Mexico uh, and uh, President Calderon complain so much about drug or, uh, guns moving south across the border uh, to, to, uh, to learn that our, our government was involved in the delivery of those guns is quite concerning, and I am sure that you feel the same way. But we are looking for uh, answers as to uh, who knew what, when, and why, and um, why, how this happened. Uh, so I look forward to if you would get back to me and the committee on um, about the waiver and whether or not the State Department issued that waiver. Um, second, I wanted to, do you agree uh, with um, Ambassador Brownfield that there is an insurgency uh, in Mexico uh, that are using terrorist uh, tactics uh, in Mexico? Well, Congressman, um, I have expressed my concern about that uh, in the past. Um, we are sensitive to the uh, characteristics that some of these drug traffickers uh, have adopted that certainly resemble uh, terrorist uh, activities. Um, and we are also aware of the um, concern by the Mexican government that we, in their view, not mix apples and oranges, so to speak. You know, let's focus on criminality, let's not mix it with something else. So this and, is an ongoing discussion that we have with our friends in Mexico. She's going to gavel me down. So, but, but <laughs> She's you and, very tough yes, on this, you know. But you, you in the past have uh, identified it as an insurgency. 
I have, I have said that it has characteristics of an insurgent, insurgency, but I am uh, very sensitive to the legitimate questions that the Mexican government raises about really whether those characteristics uh, are such that it should be defined as that. Thank you so much, Madam Secretary. Mr.